Hello everybody. In this short video, I want to give you an idea why we can formulate that the pKa and the pKb of a substance always add up to 14, at least in water. Let's say we have an acid, and I write this as HA, and this acid dissociates into proton plus the conjugate base of this acid, which would be an uh, A minus. And we can write the equilibrium equation for this reaction as Ka, this is the equilibrium constant, equals the concentration of the proton times the concentration of the base, the A minus, divided by the concentration of the remaining acid. And we must not forget that these are the equilibrium constants. Okay, so that's our Ka. Now we can do the same reaction for what happens if we add A minus the conjugate base to water. So we have A minus plus water and the conjugate base will grab a proton from the water and will turn into the acid plus OH minus. And for that we can of course write the dissociation equation or the equilibrium uh, equation Kb equals and we have on HA multiplied by the hydroxide concentration divided by the concentration of the A minus multiplied by the concentration of water. Well, concentration of water, of course, uh, is 55.6 uh, molar and uh, stays constant. Okay, so now we have basically the two important equations uh, for our purpose. And what we can do is we just simply uh, do just for fun. We say Ka times Kb. What would that give us? So we just multiply these two uh, equations uh, together and we get Ka times Kb gives us the proton concentration times the A minus divided by HA concentration multiplied by this term here. So we've got HA times OH minus divided by the concentration of the A minus times the concentration of water. So all we have done is basically multiply these two uh, equations with each other. And what we see is that we now can cancel out uh, the concentrations. So we can cancel out the concentration for HA. We can also cancel out the concentration for A minus. And what we've got left now is Ka times Kb equals, what have we got left? We've got the proton concentrations times the concentration of the OH minus divided by the concentration of water. And previously we said we basically can more or less ignore this part here, the water, so we can, in a way, remove that because we can say this is uh, really in this uh, multiplication already in. Now, do we know the concentration of protons and hydroxide ions? And 
the amazing thing is when we do that, the anything that relates to the acid or the base disappears. It is now just simply the equation for water. And uh, this is actually called the iron product. Iron product of water. So we know that in water the proton concentration is the same as the hydroxide concentration and it is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. These are these uh, concentrations. So what we can do now is we can say Ka times Kb equals 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar times 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. These are our concentrations and this would be, if we multiply that out, would be 1 times 10 to the minus 14 and the unit probably would be molar squared. So fantastic. Ah, we already have a sort of a 14 in there. Now if we ignore the, the units for the time being, what we can do now is we can sort of use a little trick and we can define the value for pKa. This would be the negative logarithm to the base of 10 of the value for Ka. And likewise, pKb is defined as the negative logarithm to the base of 10 of the Kb value. Okay, so what does that give us? So we can, what we actually can do now is we multiply or we take both sides log 10 and we take that negative log 10. So what we get on the right hand on the on the left hand side is negative log 10 of Ka times Kb equals negative log 10 of 10 to the minus 14. Now we very quickly can see that on the right hand side negative log 10 of 10 to the minus 14 this gives us 14. What can we do with the uh, left hand side we get negative log 10 of Ka plus minus log 10 of Kb. That is what we get. And what we have just defined is that negative log 10 is nothing else but pKa. And negative log Kb is nothing else but pKb. So we can simplify that and write pKa plus pKb equals 14. And that holds true for whatever acid and base pair we are dealing with. Let me do this nicely. So pKa plus pKb equals 14. Whatever the acid or the base might be. We can also use this equation that we have here, Ka times Kb. Let me write this again. Ka times 
Okay, B equals the proton concentration times the OH minus concentration. And we said that this one here would be 10 to the minus 14. We can do the same thing again with the logarithm, but this time sort of the other way around. We do it both sides of the equation minus log to the base of 10. So on the left hand side, we've got minus log 10 of 10 to the minus 14 equals minus log 10 to the proton concentration multiplied by the OH minus concentration. So what have we got? Minus log 10 of 10 to the power of minus 14, that gives us 14 equals, and now we've got minus log 10 of the proton concentration plus minus log 10 of the OH minus concentration. And uh, if we remember the definition of pH, we get 14 equals, this just simply is the pH, plus, and this here simply is the pOH. So we have not just the relationship between pKa and pKb, which always adds up to 14, we also have the relationship of pH plus pOH equals 14, and they add up to 14 as well. So, so these are two important relationships. pKa plus pKb adds up to 14, and pH plus pOH also adds up to 14. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.